So now that we're finished with the oh so wonderful transformation of this kit, let's get on to the articulation. So the head does go up and down and rotate. The arms can rotate. It can't go too far because the backpack really kind of hinders it. And I don't find that they can go up and down or in and out, but that's probably for the best. Uh, shoulder armor is separate, and the arms can go that far out. Rotate below the shoulder. Double jointed elbow. You got the ball jointed wrist, and of course the thumb is on a ball joint. So is the index finger, and the three fingers are ball jointed at the end. And each in each uh, thumb and finger does have an extra knuckle joint, which is nice. And you do have the hinged wrist. Uh, the waist can rotate. I wouldn't go too crazy. And I think I keep on pegging this thing. I don't know. I'm gonna have to glue that probably. It doesn't want to stay pegged on. It's, it stays really good on the back, on the tail fin, but not on the back. Uh, the skirt armor I mentioned is double hinged, and I think I really screwed this one up. Uh, the wall jointed side skirt. Of course, you also have the extra joint from the transformation, so it can make things interesting. Let's just say that. Uh, the legs can go pretty far forwards. A little back, out pretty far, rotate at the hip. Uh, double jointed knee. Uh, the foot armor can move a little bit. And the foot can go forwards and back. And a little side to side, a little bit of rotation. Now, you do have the joint from the transformation, but you also have an extra one just for the foot in mobile suit mode. And of course, you have a little heel spur. So, definitely not the best in terms of articulation, but <clears throat> personally, I'm kind of glad because if it had more joints and like uh, moving pieces, transforming it would be even harder because more things would want to move. So, I'm kind of glad it's. It, it does what it does. I don't I'm, I don't want it too articulate, really. I think this is just right. So, we have an opening cockpit on the Zeta here, which can be a little problematic. It doesn't usually unpeg the uh, chest, but you do have a little, like, a control panel there, sort of. That's what it looks like. And there is a little figure of Camille Badon. Very little. Oh, excuse me. And uh, you can see he has his little helmet on the floor there. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Pretty small. And we have the shield. A little bit of a joint here. And you do have the connector. You just flip this out. That's kind of how it was stored in Weaver Rider mode. You just flip this out. And now you have this piece which is on a hinge. And it will peg into his arm, on the hole right there, on his elbow, either arm. And it's pretty solid. Pretty solid. Now, whoopsie, you also have beam saber handles mounted on the side skirts. They can flip these out and you can grab them. They're pegged in pretty secure. And apparently it can be used in a, they can be used in wave rider mode as like, I think they can fire beams or something. And I have one taken out, if I can find it. That's another story. Here it is. Very tiny. It does have a little peg like other uh, real grades. Now, I can't remember. I'd have to look at the other real grades. But the hands, the way they peg in, it's not against that uh, wrist joint. There's actually, it's, the hole's angled a little bit. So you have to kind of tilt the beam saber handle a little bit to peg it in properly, because if you peg it in straight, it's not going to go in. Like that. But once it's there, it's pretty secure. Now, you also get two sets of beams. You get 1 to 100 ones, which I think are for the beam sabers, and then you get 1 to 144s, which I think is for the beam rifle, because I do remember him using the beam rifle as a beam saber uh, once in a while. 
now just has a movable handle here and retracting scope which has a clear blue piece which the head actually has a clear blue piece the uh and the uh, sensor and the eyes i use the stickers on the eyes just because it looks a little better and you can just move this this is the connector for the uh, mobile armor mode it has a opening up uh, barrel or stock whatever looks pretty good you can remove the clip if you want the energy clip and it does have the same little peg so it is it is also angled a little so it'll peg into the hand looks pretty nice and you also have speaking of the hands you have quite a few extra hands uh, these are the articular ones but you have an open hand for the left hand a set of fist hands and one trigger finger hand so if you don't want to use the articular hand you can use this one and drop it and I, it does actually it's kind of different the way it looks how it uh connects it's not just like uh, flat it actually this joint here is uh where it kind of it pegs into that one finger so it doesn't look like a big seam line. I kind of like that. I appreciate it. And just swap that out. And there we go. And it does have the uh, missile tubes. I think they're grenades or something. That are right here in the forearm. And they're very tiny. You can barely see them, but those little gray, those little gray nubs right there. Those are the uh, grenades. And you also get little uh, canisters, like, because it only can fire so many, but you can get the refillable canisters. That peg for the shield will go. You get two of those. And that is basically the Zeta Gundam all armed up. Pretty nice. I do like the accessories, and they hold very securely. I haven't had any problem with them falling off. Once you figure out exactly how to uh, connect them into the um, manipulator hands. So yeah. Accessories are pretty good. So, comparisons, I figure might as well do all the 144 scale Zeta Gundams I have. So we'll start off with the original that I've got. Well, maybe not the original original, but the original high grade. Back in 1991 or 92. It's the early 90s anyways. This is also a fully transformable model. No parts farming. But, wow. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely outdated, majorly. Uh, this looks like, like a toy, a kid's toy, and this looks like a high-end model, pretty much. And, of course, the recent high-grade of the Zeta Gundam, which looks, uh, these look really good together, actually. I think they look pretty nice. This is the uh, gloss version, the high gloss, and I think it's actually... They're, I think they're on par. I think they're about the right height, too. Which makes sense. I mean, you know, Bandai, since the high grades and stuff, they aren't making them the right height, usually. They try. And I think they work pretty good. Obviously, Real Grey has a lot more detail and uh, panel lining. But yeah, I think they do look decent together. So that is the Real Grade Zeta Gundam. It is really nice beautiful in both modes transformation is uh, it's hard to say it's terrible because it it's the only way they could really do it i think in this scale without being a parse former like the uh the new high grade was while it's still really annoying and i still think i've <clears throat> screwed up a few pieces by transforming it so uh, if, you, if you really want to do it i wouldn't do it too much because i don't think the inner frame can really take it um, accessories are really good. Articulation is kind of basic, but you know what? I like it that way because I don't think with the transformation parts it would it would have benefited. So, and it it just looks really good. So yeah, I really do like it. So that's about it, and I'll see you at the next review.